Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. If I contribute to the welfare of others, I am contributing to my own welfare. If I contribute to the suffering of others, I am contributing to my own suffering. Please continue watching to find out more precious topics from Venerable Tashi Nima. Vegan, cause we can't be that stupid. Guten Tag, bedenkende Geigers means good day broad-minded viewers in Dutch. I'm Alice. The people of Belgium, thank you for your strong belief in universal love and unwavering faith in a vegan heaven on earth. May Buddha's grace and love guide you toward the goal of ultimate enlightenment. The Venerable Tashi Nima was born in the West Indies, where he studied with the Dominican and Jesuit priests in his youth. Later, he also trained to become a priest before following his Buddhist inner call, after which the enthusiastic Tashi Nima traveled and practiced with many distinguished Tibetan teachers from various Buddhist schools. Finally, he settled his heart wholly with the Zhonang lineage and devoted himself to Kyabye Tashi Norbu Rinpoche. Currently, the Venerable Tashi Nima is leading the Universal Compassion Buddhist Congregation, a spiritual organization that has solid footprints in the USA and Mexico. To the surprise of many, the Venerable Tashi Nima has been vegan for more than 50 years and is well known for his animal people rights advocacy. Specialized retreats for animal people activists and the Buddha's Bowl spiritual book are some of his remarkable contributions to a new vegan world. On today's show, we are fortunate to have a heartfelt conversation with the Venerable Tashi Nima on various topics embracing the fundamentals of Buddhist teachings and veganism. Known for his compassion and straightforwardness, the venerable Tashi Nima welcomes real truth seekers, but he also has non-negotiable rules for his Sangha, such as no initiation for meat eaters and no animal people consumption in the group. The venerable will now enlighten the audiences on the origin of these principles. There's the five traditional Buddhist precepts, right? Avoid killing, avoid taking what is not uh, given freely, avoid deceiving others, avoid abusing others for your own pleasure, and avoid intoxication leading to the other four, right? And it's very simple. It's the baseline for human life. And we try to make sure that people understand how important it is to stop the slaughter, right? There's no need. There has never been any need. There's no excuse. Everything is available everywhere. You can even walk into a Burger King and ask for a vegan burger. The Buddha actually stopped animal sacrifice in India. And he gave extensive teachings on what is appropriate food for humans. When we hear the actual teaching of the Buddha is compassion for all sentient beings, not for human beings, for all sentient beings. And the definition of sentient is someone who can suffer. So when we hear the first precept that we should not kill, not encourage others to kill, not have others kill on our behalf, not rejoice in their killing, we should understand this applies to everyone. This is not exclusively about human beings. That is perhaps one of the biggest differences between Buddhism and Jainism as well, and other religions that we don't make a special consideration for humans. All sentient beings have the same nature. All sentient beings have the potential to be enlightened. All human and non-human beings have uh, natural perfection, and they are entitled 
to life, they're entitled to freedom, they are entitled to uh, the cessation of suffering. From a spiritual point of view, the Venerable Tashi Nima effortlessly connects the dots between common wrong views that humans often have about the meat-eating habit. The view of separation is the wrong view, the wrong idea, that somehow we are separate from, distinct from other sentient beings, and what happens to them does not happen to us. Right? It's a negation of the truth of interdependence, which even modern science accepts fully these days, right? Every, every being, actually every object, is interdependent with everything else, right? We are a totality, and the totality is formed by the combination of all its components. So the first wrong view is the view of separation. I have nothing to do with this, right? No, yes, we have everything to do with everyone, and what others suffer, we suffer. The second basic wrong view is the view of supremacy. And that is the view that my interests come first, which is actually impossible to accomplish in practice, because if interdependence is true, what I do to others, I do to myself. So that it's not possible to gain advantage for me alone. If I contribute to the welfare of others, I am contributing to my own welfare. If I contribute to the suffering of others, I am contributing to my own suffering. So the second correct view is the view of equality, that all sentient beings have the same rights, the same needs, the same desire to be free and to be happy. So if we are able to understand that, then how can we go and kill other animals and use them for food right? when we are only harming not only them, but we're harming ourselves? The Venerable Tashi Nima continues to remind the audience about two basic universal laws, which are the law of interconnectedness and the law of totality. Well, I think that it's becoming more and more obvious, even for the Western mentality, that all beings and actually all things, including the environment, are closely interrelated. Right? That there's no possibility of separating anyone or anything out. We have had that strange mentality as humans for a very long time, right? That we were here and nature was out there and that we could dominate nature and we could use all other species for our own apparent benefit. And that has failed miserably. You know, we have driven over 60% of other animal species to extinction. And what are we doing? We are driving ourselves to extinction because what we do to others, we do to ourselves. So interconnectedness is not an aspiration. It's not It's not a, a beautiful uh, thought. It's not an aspiration. It's a reality. And the other law of totality, of equality, is that it is impossible for us to create harm in one place that is not reflected in another, right? If you um, eliminate the oxygen in one part of the room, it's not like the other part of the room will continue to have full oxygenation, right? If you remove the oxygen, you're removing the oxygen. Uh, so we have to understand we are in this literally together with all sentient beings, with all plants, with everything, with, with minerals, with sentient and insentient beings. And their fate is our fate. Happy viewers, before closing the first part of this show, let's hear from the venerable Tashi Nima about his simple yet inspiring spiritual book, The Buddha's Bow, which is not only insightful for true Buddhist practitioners, but also for awakening people. 
Yes. Because of the misrepresentations of what the Buddha taught about food and how we should comport ourselves in relationship with the animals, some years ago, I decided I had to look at the scriptures, both in the Pali Canon and in the Sanskrit Canon, the Sanskrit, Chinese, and uh, Tibetan Canons of Buddhist scripture, to see what is it exactly that the Buddha said. And we compiled these instructions right, in an easy to read, attractive format, and it's always been available for free to download. And here we have collected instructions, not only from the Buddha, but from Buddhist teachers of all denominations, telling us what is the clear teaching of the Dharma in regards to our relationship with animals. How should we behave? How should we conduct our lives so that we are in harmony with our own nature, in harmony with other species, in harmony with the environment, with the planet itself. And the Buddha was extremely explicit, right? He wasn't just hinting. He actually mentioned very clearly what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. If you do not believe in scripture, believe in the evidence of your senses. What is the single greatest cause of water scarcity, of deforestation, of contamination, of climate warming, even of human hunger? And all of these things are caused by animal farming, by animal slaughter, by the abuse of animals. It's the World Health Organization, the United Nations, every health authority in the world is saying, this is unsustainable. The basic human nature is opposed to cruelty. It is full of love. It is full of compassion. And if we only are able to see the suffering that we're inflicting on innocent sentient beings, we will stop. We have to stop for their sake and for our own sake. I'm not a person who tolerates cruelty to animals for the sake of few minutes of flavor. Dan Piraro, vegan. Grateful viewers, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of this insightful program with many exciting topics shared by the venerable Tashi Nima. Coming up next is an uplifting Supreme Master Ching Hai Day celebration, part three of eight, right after noteworthy news. May your compassion and good deeds for our beloved fellow humans and animal people friends shine brightly to the highest heaven and graciously glorify God. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash VR. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com slash schedule et suprememastertv.com slash VR. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra schedule y suprememastertv.com barra VR. 저희 방송은 다양한 언어를 제공합니다. 다음을 참고하세요. suprememastertv.com slash schedule 그리고 suprememastertv.com slash VR.